Starring Michael O'Shea and Richard Conti in Cargo Over Burma on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. A trapped garrison in the Burma jungles. American combat cargo planes flying unarmed to their rescue over Jap-infested land. This is but one of the thrills in Cargo Over Burma, starring Michael O'Shea and Richard Conti on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. In the long list of better things for better living, Speed Easy Wall Finish is an outstanding contribution to home decoration plans. And now is the time to fix up the rooms for those returning servicemen and women. Speed Easy will make it a pleasant and easy job. It's just what its name says. Speed Easy because it goes on quickly and dries in less than an hour. And Easy because you thin it with water and it's so easy to apply. It dries to a velvety, lasting finish and costs less than $3 to redecorate the average room. It's Speed Easy and it's made by DuPont. In far-off Burma, an American sergeant sat down one day not long ago and wrote a radio script about the kind of life he was leading. He sent it back to the States, and tonight we present this authentic story on the DuPont Cavalcade. To understand and share the sort of experiences from which our men are coming back, listen to Cargo Over Burma by Sergeant Jack DeNova of the 4th Combat Cargo Group. Michael O'Shea plays Technical Sergeant Joey Palazzola, and Richard Conti is Captain Dick O'Ryan in Cargo Over Burma. Just before dawn at an American air base in India, close to the border of enemy-held Burma, the men are just finishing breakfast and waiting for their pre-flight briefing. Hey, Joey. Hey, Palazzola. Hmm? Oh, uh, what do you want? Hey, how come you didn't grab onto a second help on a chow? Me? Oh, right now, chow is the last thing on my mind. Oh, yeah? Hey, Captain Orion, get a load of this chow hound. Now, look, Sergeant Atkinson, there are sometimes other things on my mind besides what goes into my stomach. Says you. <laughs> Since when, Joey? Oh, come on, Captain. Well, I'll tell you. It's, it's this here letter from home. The girl marry somebody else? Oh, no, sir, nothing like that. This letter's from my mom. She okay? Yeah, she's swell. Well, then what's the beef, Joey? Yeah, why the loss of the Palazzola appetite? Oh, wait a minute. Let me read you something from this letter. It says here, Dear Joey, what happened to your last month's allotment? No, that's not it. Wait. Ah, here it is. I was telling the neighbors what you were doing in a war, but they don't understand. Well, so what? Then Mom says, so I thought maybe you could write a nice long letter all about what you do in a war so I can tell the people and be proud of my soldier boy, Joey. Now, how do you like that? Can't blame her for wanting to be proud of you. Yeah, but what can I tell a captain that we're nothing but freight handlers except we do it by plane? Well, I should feel like two cents. Now, if I was only in the paratroopers or, or the tank corps... Or... Joey, I got an idea how you can make a long letter out of what we do. Yeah, what? Write two words in each page? Oh, look. We get briefed in a couple of minutes for today's first mission. Okay, so you start your letter with that. Like this. At 0430 hours, we were briefed for the first mission. Then you go ahead and write the rest of the letter about what happens for the rest of the day. You mean just like that, huh? Just like that. Well, I'll see you later, Joey. Lieutenant Robbins is about to start the briefing. Hmm. Well, anyway, it'll be a lot of words. Joey, maybe the captain's got something there. Okay, man, let's have a little quiet. What? It's where the letter starts, Joey. Lieutenant Robinson's going to brief us. How am I going to take it all down? I'm no stenographer. I don't try to. Just hit the high spot. Yeah. Turn those lights out, Sammy. Thank you. Uh, flash the slide, Corporal. Okay, this slide shows a map of Mictula, Burma. British and Indian troops and a detachment of American Akak men are cut off from all supplies and now face extinction. Unless we fly reinforcements and supplies into Mictula today. Now, let me give you three facts. One, you'll be flying over Jap-infested country. Supply high enough to lessen the danger from ground fire. And two, there are enemy aircraft in the area, so remember the higher you fly, the more vulnerable you become to air attack. And three, there's the strong probability that before you arrive at Mictula, the Japs will have recaptured the strip. So men, before landing, try to make sure the British still hold us. 
See? That gives your letter a good start. Okay, men. Set your watches. It'll take me the rest of the war to put all that down. The time is exactly 0447. Now, get going, men. Clear left. Clear right. Atkinson, what's today's radio code name for our ship? Base 421, sir. Base 421, huh? And what's the code for Mictola? Mushroom for Mictola. Thanks. Charlie Obo Tower. Charlie Obo Tower, this is Pace 421. Pace 421, ready for takeoff. Pace 421. Pace 421, this is the tower. Your destination and load. Load heavy guns. Destination mushroom. Roger. Pace 421, you're clear to go. So you want to know what I do in this war, huh? Well, I'll tell you. It's like this. I am crew chief on a combat cargo plane. We just took off at 5-0-0. That's 5 o'clock sharp to you. This is our first mission of the day. Now we make these runs every day, just like Uncle Pete, who works as a freight handler on the Pente. Oh, no, I can't say that. I'm supposed to be a soldier. <laughs> Take over, Stein. Now, men, we're heading into the danger zone. Let's brush up on procedure. Jap Raider planes have been shooting down too many of our transports. We don't want it to happen to us. If we're on our toes and we get jumped, we can get away. Right, Stein. Now, here's the setup. From the cockpit, co-pilot Stein and I can see everything in front. Charlie, you stick your head up in the astral dome and keep your eyes peeled above and behind. Stiff neck for me. Palazzola, you keep watch out the right side hatch. Hey, if I spot you them red balls, hey, you'll hear plenty of yelling from me. Okay, Joey. If I have warning enough, we can drop down and hug the ground. That's right. They'll be afraid to maneuver their fast flying Zeke's at low altitude. Oh, one thing more. Charlie, every five minutes, I'll give you a position report. If we get jumped, you're to transmit an immediate distress message giving our heading and position. Get it? Yes, sir. Okay, men, get to your stations and keep your eyes peeled. Japs will find out soon enough, hey. Looks all British to me. See any Japs? No, sir. No, sir. Keep your fingers crossed. We're going in. that crew of coolies, Joey. Out here, Captain, surrounded by Japs. Hey, we can't be fussy, you know what Hurry I mean? Hurry up and get those guns unloaded. The Japs have been shelling this place off and on all day. Let's get going before they start dropping him in here again. Yes, sir. All right, you coolie muscle men, get a wiggle on. Come on, you want this water to last forever? Tikai, sir. Tikai. Yeah, you said it, Chief. Tikai. Come on, get going. Those guns are needed. Yeah, let's give it that calm later. Let's go here. All right, here goes the first one. Now, let her roll. Come on. Keep going. Good work. Now, let's get the other one. Come on. Tom Lay. Let's go. I say, Captain, may I speak with you? One second, please. Atkinson. Yes, sir. Anything new on the radio? Nothing, sir. Well, stay with him. Now then, Major. You brought that artillery in the nick of time. Very good, sir. Now, maybe we can blast their mortar concentration. Uh, Captain, I have 35 casualties to get out of this place. Can you carry the poor blokes out on your kite? Major, this is an unarmed transport. My orders are to get this crate off the ground the second I unload. This is only one of many missions we'll be making today. I understand, Captain, but the men are desperately in need of hospitalization. Look at them, brave fellows. Well, if you can get them aboard within three minutes after the last gun rolls down the ramp, okay. Three minutes? You Yanks are always in such a blasted hurry. Very well. Uh, you walking wounded, stand ready to carry the stretcher cases aboard the very instant the next gun is unloaded. What's the matter with those Joey, Burmese, Joey? Get that gun off ahead. I'm doing the best I can, Stay Captain. Come on, you characters, all together. Now, let's give it that tall lay routine. Tom Lay, come on, let's go. They're shelling the field again. Yeah, and there goes my coolie gang. Hey, come on back here. That'll go into the brush, Captain. Come on back here. If the Japs get you, you're going to be sorry. That's done. This will take off without unloading, Stan. 
Stand by, everybody. I say, what about us giving a hand with that gun? Are you kidding? You guys are wounded. How can you do it? We can try. Come on, lads. Let's give a hand here. That's right. I'll do it now. No, not you in the litter. Just the walking wounded. Hey, Captain, look. I got me another unloading crew. Come along, men. Hurry. They're coming closer. We haven't got time. We'll have to take off, Joey. One good push should do it. Come along now. Together now. Ah, but everybody, yeah. keep up. Let's go. Here Come on. Come yeah. she goes. Hello. Good work, boy. All right, let's get those wounded aboard. Hey, come on, give me a hand with this letter, will you? Come on, my lad. Let's know the visitation. Well, we got off, all right. You okay now, chum? Good now. Thanks for the fresh bandage, Yank. Hey, it's uh, some spirit you guys got. All cut up and still able to sing. Oh, right, sir. Uh, I say, close back there, wasn't it? Hmm? <laughs> Too close. Cigarette? Ah, thanks, Yank. Barney, Barney. Hey, what's he want? Oh, that's Indian for water. Uh, got a spot for him? Yeah, yeah here's my canteen. Hey, how's he gonna drink? His head's all taped up. There's a drinking tube taped on his arm. The medic fixed it. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, hey, here you are, fella. Take it easy. Now you got it. Now, come on, sip it up. That's a boy. Hey, what happened to this guy? Got himself burned when a Jap shell blasted his blinking tank. Uh-huh. How about you? Uh, Jap sniper crocked me in the leg. But we're holding him. We've opened the Burma Road again and give you lads a vacation. <laughs> ah, don't be listening to that Liverpool dandy, Yank. He's just trying to wheedle American cigarettes. Oh, he is, is he? Okay, Liverpool, you got one. Oh, thank you. And you too, Scotty. Here, pass the whole pack around. Right, Hey, are you all through for the day when you get back, laddie? I should say we ain't. This is our first mission of the day. Sometimes we make five or six trips. Yeah, it's a funny job you lads to do it. Quite. You Yank saved the day for us. With the supplies your plane landed, we'll win our little scrap at Mictula. Oh, well, get out of here. If you guys hadn't laid aside your crutches to help us finish unloading, we'd probably be there yet. Hey, we're nearing the base. Wow, we're going to be home in time for chow. I hope. Well, Joey, did you write up our last mission for your mom? No, I didn't, Cap. You see, it would sound like Easter Sunday in Central Park. Now, take if I was even in the infantry. Maybe I could get a chance to knock out a couple of pillboxes or, or do something real interesting and exciting to tell the folks about. <laughs> Come on, Joey. We've got to load up some 100-octane gas and fly it over to Burma-based fighters. Let's go on the double. Come on. All right. Oh, won't Mom and the neighbors get a thrill out of that? Delivering gasoline. You know what they'll think? They'll think I'm running a filling station. Check your oil today. Dear Mom... Here I am on our plane writing this letter like you asked. What do I do in this war? Well, I'll tell you. Right now, we are running a little errand over to Burma. Wait a minute, errand, errand, errand boy. Oh, no, I can't say that. Jap zero at three o'clock. Get on the radio and report our position. Yes, sir. And that's with a cargo of gasoline. Hold your hat, boys. We're going down. Hey, he's following us down, Captain. And that's without so much as a pop gun for protection. Has anybody here got a slingshot? Shut up, Joey. Where's that thing? I can't see him. Yeah, wait a minute, Cap. There he is. He's tailing us down, Captain. And he's gaining fast. He's making a run from above and behind. Oh, zigzag, Captain. Zigzag. Here he comes. Oh, take the heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Take the heart of Jesus. <laughs> Listening to Michael O'Shea as Technical Sergeant Joey Palazzola, and Richard Conti as Captain O'Ryan in the story of the Fourth Combat Cargo Group, Cargo Over Burma, on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Captain okay. Orion's unarmed cargo plane, the Bouncing Beverly, is being attacked by a Jap Zero while transporting high-octane gasoline to Burma-based fighters. Well, Captain, that's his third pass. 
Anybody hit that time? I'm okay. Okay, him. Yeah. Where is he now? He's circling around, Captain. Like a falcon after prey. He can only come in one angle so long as he hugs the ground. Joey, how's that cargo of gasoline? Captain, we did not lose a drop. Well, he's getting ready to make another pass from above and behind. He should run out of ammo this time. Or else run out of us for a target. He's starting his run. Zigzag, Captain, zigzag. Stand by for a ram. Look out! <laughs> Suicide pilot. He missed it. He's out of control. There he goes. He's crashing into the jungle. Just one big sheet of flame. But for the grace of God, that would be us. Anybody hit? Stein okay. You okay, Atkinson? I'm okay, sir. Palazor. Joey. Joey, you all right? Charlie, see what's wrong with uh, Joey. I'm, I'm okay, Captain. Any damage? Only to my appetite. Why didn't you answer? I was praying, sir. I was giving thanks that you didn't happen to be zigging when you should have been zagging. Hello, ma'am. This is your wandering boy pushing a pencil again. The last paragraph was written in India, after which we run back to Burma with a load of medical supplies, which we dropped to some stranded troops by parachute. Now we're heading back to base for supper. Eight hours since lunch, but riding up in the air like this, you, you don't seem to have much of an appetite. Especially for tinned beef, which is about all we get on these trips. You know, with a little mustard, Mom, I would rather eat the tin cans. about to starve. What do we got for supper, hey? Uh, it looks like that stuff on a shingle. Oh, no, not tinned beef on toast. Oh, murder, how's that for a change of diet? Sorry to break in in your supper, man. Here we go. However, we just received word of a critical situation at the front. We're flying reinforcements immediately. Oh, brother, what a day. What number is this mission, Charlie? That's number five. Five missions in one day, huh? That's combat cargo for you. No rest for the wicked. There's just one thing, men. The weather. We're going into the pre-monsoon season now, and that means lots of weather. Bad weather. Worse than the monsoons. I advise you to fly high enough to miss the mountain peaks, but not too high, or you will ice up. As for thunderheads, try going around them if you can. Thunderheads have rocks in them. That's all, man. Hey, this is all right. This is for me. Kid. Hey, how come, Joey? You look almost happy. Yes, sir. This is the kind of a mission I like. You know, these British reinforcements ought to have some eats on them. Maybe chocolate hay. <laughs> And uh, thanks for the chocolate, Tommy. See you in Rangoon sometime, huh? Joey, quit your right. gabbing and get him off fast. Yes, sir. This guy didn't look so good when we crossed the mountain. And Atkinson. Yes, sir. Find the loading office and see what we're carrying back. I can tell you what you're carrying, Captain. Jap prisoners. Jap prisoners? How many? Fourteen prisoners and two armed guards. What are they like? Uh, rather a surly lot, I'd say, Captain. Okay, start bringing them in. I want to get out of here before those thunderheads close over the mountains. Are you the guards? Uh, yes, Captain. All right, keep the prisoner's hands tied and see to it that each one's strapped to his seat. Very good, sir. I only hope they try some of their tricks. I'm itching to pop off a few. I want no breaks and no gunplay on this ship, get it? One Jap running amok could be the finish of all of us. As you say, Captain. Now get moving, you blasted rotters. Get away. Come on up here. Enjoy. Yes, sir. One more precaution. After takeoff, post yourself in the doorway between the cockpit and the cabin and stay there for the entire trip. Uh, you, you mean with not even maybe a little time off for a little chow, sir? You take your eyes off those Japs for a single second, I'll put you on bread and water for the duration. Hmm. Yes, sir. Well, Mom... Here it is, a way past my bedtime, and I'm still up in the air watching some very special cargo that we're flying back to base. Which, the first thing I will do when I get there is lap up a couple of quarts of ice cream. A guy can dream, can he? Oh, great, lightning getting wind. Now's the time for old Bounce and Beverly to hold together. Fine, fine, now we get hail, with the visibility zero. I think I'll go forward and see what gives. Say, Captain, I was just wondering... Joey, get back there and watch those jets. Yes, sir. Atkinson. Give me a radio fix. I can't do it, Captain. Radio compass needle just won't set anywhere. She's spinning like a top. Well, stick with it, Charlie. The gyro's out, Captain. We'll fly on needle and ball. Hey, Charlie, try that radio again. 
We're in the cloud roll. Sign, help me pull back the stick. Back! Back! We're dropping 3,000 feet a minute. If we can point our nose up, we may come out of it, but don't stall us! We rode that roller right out of the storm. Oh, talk about being caught in the draft. That downdraft tossed us around like a leaf in a cyclone. We were lucky. Oh, God was with us this time. Take over, Stein. I better check the cabin. I'll take a look through the slot, Captain. Hey, Joe, he's out cold. Must hit his head when we drop. What's going on in there? The caps are loose. They're fighting the guards. How many are loose? Looks like two. They got the guards. Let me in there. Don't go in there, Captain. They'll blast you sure. Hey, wait a minute. Joey's all right. Shoot, Joey, shoot! They got him. Joey got him. Both of them. And the first one of you monkeys that wiggles an eyelash, I'll give you what I gave those other two tomatoes. Blimey, lad, you came in the nick of time. You drilled them both. Good for you, Joey. Some shoot right from the hip while lying on the floor. Are they... are they dead, hey? No. But the blighters won't be able to sit down for the rest of the trip. Gee, I feel kind of weak. The captain co-pilot wants you, sir. Okay, Atkinson. Let's see if we can get a fix. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Stein? We're running low on gas. Low on gas? you better switch to reserve. Atkinson, try to get through to the base and get that fix, or brother, we're in a fix. Charlie Obo. Charlie Obo, this is pasteboard 2 1. Pasteboard 2 1. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. I still can't raise him, Captain. Well, Stein, we've cooked cookies. Our gas indicator is in the zero zone. Captain, Captain, I raised him. Base board two one. Base board two one. Charlie Obo. Come in if you hear me. Over. This is base board two one, Charlie Obo. Give me a magnetic bearing to reach you. Two one. Two one. Steer two seven. Three degrees. Two seven. Three degrees, over. Captain, Lieutenant, I got a heading. Steer, 273. 273 it is. Well, we come to the end of a perfect 19-hour day. Are you all right, Joey? Yeah, Cap, I'm okay now. My appetite is coming back. Where are you going, Joey? Oh, hello, Captain. Oh, I was just going to... I was just going to go and get me another load of hamburgers uh, with onions and ketchup, and then I was going to eat those, and then I was going to get back and, and finish this letter to my mother. Well, you're the hero of the day, Joey. You sit here and finish that latest letter to your mom, and I'll go get you, Charles. Oh, Cap, you're kidding. Boy, now you really got something to write home about. Write home about? You mean write about that storm and them Japs busting loose and all that shooting? Sure. Oh, Cap, I wouldn't dare do that. It would scare my mother half to death. Okay. I'll get your chow for you. Oh, thanks, Captain. Hmm. What a guy. Yes, sir, a real guy. Well, uh, back to the letter. Dear Mom, you ask what I do in this war, and now I will tell you. Nothing. We are nothing but freight handlers like Uncle Pete on the railroad, only we do it by plane. Our thanks to you, Michael O'Shea and Richard Conte, and all members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade Club. <laughs> Our star, Michael O'Shea, will return in just a moment. Now, here is Gaines Whitman. War Production Board restrictions on DDT have been lifted by the government. You've heard about this new insecticide. It may well be the best ever. The army used it to stop a typhus epidemic in Italy. The Marines used it to spray whole islands in the Pacific. Jungle troops used it to kill malarial mosquitoes in their tents. Airplanes have sprayed it over such towns as Rockford, Illinois, during an outbreak of infantile paralysis. And health authorities are watching to see if the paralysis disappears with the insect. DDT has been called the outstanding medical advance made during the war. DuPont has been manufacturing this marvelous new insecticide in quantity for the armed forces for the past three years. Our production can now serve industry and the public. 
Now, here are some interesting facts about DDT. First of all, DDT, as the chemist makes it, what you might call raw DDT, cannot be used in your home. To name only one reason, it is much too strong, too powerful. DuPont Research Laboratories learned during the war that there are many ways of compounding DDT and that its effectiveness for different jobs depends upon how much of it is used and with what material it is blended. What is more, the compounding should be done under exact scientific control. For example, one part of DDT in a hundred million parts of water kills mosquito wrigglers in ponds. But for other jobs, tests have shown it is better to have compositions of varying strengths, or a powder, or an oil solution, depending upon the purpose for which the insecticide is intended. DDT, made by DuPont, will reach you in two ways. First, it will reach you properly compounded and thoroughly tested in compositions for farm, garden, and home use, which will be on sale in the stores and which will carry the DuPont oval trademark. Second, it will come to you as an ingredient of insecticides made by other manufacturers under their own well-known trademarks. Also, DuPont has on test interior paints and finishes containing DDT. Insects have only to crawl across a surface finished with paints containing DDT to pick up enough to kill them. Tests show that these paints will be effective for at least a year. Manufacturers of insecticides for farm and home use are invited to write to the DuPont Company, Wilmington, Delaware, for full information about DuPont DDT compounds for any insecticidal preparations they may be developing. DDT is a notable addition to the list of DuPont Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. And now, here is the star of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Michael O'Shea. In his recent address to Congress, General Eisenhower paid special tribute to the men and women of the French resistance movement who risked capture and death to aid our allied armies. The underground working secretly against the Germans had to move in swift and mysterious ways. One of the most exciting and daring of their exploits will be presented on next week's cavalcade. An innocent-looking circus wagon loaded with high explosives and an American soldier dressed in an orange clown suit. These are only a few of the elements in this fascinating story. The stars will be John Hodiak and my old buddy, Robert Bailey. Be sure to tune in next week to the DuPont Cavalcade, starring John Hodiak and Robert Bailey in Sawdust Underground. Cavalcade programs of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Michael O'Shea, Hunt Stromberg star, will appear next in the stage production, The Red Mill. Richard Conti appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and may currently be seen in Captain Eddie. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Sergeant Jack DeNova of the 4th Combat Cargo Group. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Don Hodiak and Robert Bailey in Sawdust Underground on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.